CEO of Sound Planning Group. Uh, David, great to have you on the show, especially as we start a second Thanks. quarter. And now it seems like these rate cut expectations a bit in flux. What are you telling your clients as we start Q2? Uh, well, great to be with you here, Kristen. You know, uh, we're at a point in the market cycle here where uh, the Fed policy is not influencing interest rates as much as interest rates are now beginning to influence Fed policy. And so that's a really big distinction here uh, because it's been quite the opposite, at least by narrative, as we were supposed to be cutting rates as of last July. And so, you know, the market has ultimately rallied to these all-time high moments, which is wonderful. I vote that we continue to trend in that direction. Uh, but we've done so based upon unconfirmed reports of these cuts. And so I think the world's just taking a pause here. We're looking at this. We just got a couple of hot CPI reports, uh, which I think uh, are, are, are actually establishing a new trend. And I know that that's not a popular idea because no one wants to see inflation. Uh, but I think that we are, we are likely, as a result of uh, the deficit spending that we're doing, and printing, we're, we're going to be seeing higher inflation. And I think as we uh, head into the year, it's going to continue to tick up and we're going to find ourselves with a handful of questions of how do we really manage this uh, going forward? And the market doesn't currently have an answer. So what does that mean for investors, uh, David? Perhaps more volatility this year. Stocks traditionally do rise uh, around a presidential mm -hmm. election. We'll get one of those uh, in November, but corporate America does seem to be holding up. So what should investors prepare themselves for uh, knowing that, yes, that first rate cut in the path forward for inflation does still seem a bit elusive? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, here's the reality. Our entire system has been set up on zero interest rates for about 15 years. And so when you just, you know, change things two years ago uh, and we start, you know, flipping the system here and, and raising interest rates, um, it, it, it affects demand on the market. We've got a lot of supply and demand imbalances that were not there previous to this moment. And so, you know, where do we go from here? Well, I mean, ultimately, the Fed uh, doesn't want to drop rates, you know, and make that Arthur Burns mistake where they have to, you know, really just ratchet them up like we saw uh, here in, as, as we ended the late 70s in the last inflation cycle. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're trying to remain cautious here. I just don't think that the market has really priced in the fact that, you know, we may not get as many rate cuts uh, as they expect. And then as well, this is an election year, as you mentioned. I think that there's going to be a lot of political instability just because this election is gearing up to be one that, you know, we've not necessarily seen before. I mean, just to be honest, you know, President Biden isn't even out there spending money right now, which doesn't tell me with a lot of confidence that he's even thinking he's going to be the candidate next year. So, um, you know, this is this is sort of a weird point that we find ourselves in right now. But hey, everything seems okay. There's still a Goldilocks theme that's that's that hasn't been canceled out at least at this point. And again, I vote that it happens that way. I think that the reality though is that the Fed did not recognize even the the banking challenges that occurred last March. And uh, you know, as we as we step into April here, uh, this is this is a, a new time frame where you know you know consumers pay their taxes, banks have less cash. Uh, typically during this time frame. And I'm even seeing reports right now that banks might have to go to the Fed uh, to get cash reserves just to uh, uh, offset these uh, these tax payments. So, you know, how is that ultimately going to play out, Kristen? Um, you know, I, I think that we move into uh, uh, the second quarter here. I think that we are going to start to see some rises. Um, you know, there, there, there's still a market that is priced to kind of perfection right now. And so I think that we could see a melt up, you know, an, another rally here. But, but be a paying attention to places like gold, though, because how can inflation be under control when gold's at all-time highs? Th those two ideas just don't make sense uh, coexisting together. So I don't think inflation's done, and I think that that's really going to be our big challenge. I guess here's a question for you, uh, David, because sure. some of our viewers might be wondering, you know, should they be adding to the stock market when stocks are at record highs? Does that make sense, uh, knowing that two key factors are so uncertain, right? The path forward for inflation, as well as the Fed's reaction uh, via borrowing costs or interest rates. And so I ask about what point we are in the cycle, because if we do continue to melt up, how long do you think that can continue before there is potentially some sort of larger reckoning uh, that we would see more indicative of a late stage cycle like a recession? 
Well, I think you just asked the million dollar question. When does it all start to change? You know, that's one thing that none of us know when it's going to change, how far it's going to drop, how long it's going to stay down for. Um, I do think, though, that there's a high probability that we're, we're, we're going to see a lost decade, uh, which is how we started the year 2000 through June of 2013, 13 and a half years lost, actually. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, when it comes down to should we be allocating more into the stock market right now? You know, yes and no. I think that there's a lot of places that we can find great opportunities. As an example, uh, if we look at metal miners, I think metal miners are of value. They're on sale right now. They've been essentially discounted for the last two decades. And I believe with this new higher gold price, which you know has been knocking on the doors of the all-time highs four different times here going back to 2011. So the fact that it's above and it's stayed above since March 8th, um, I think that that's a really big deal for us to be paying attention. So I really like metal miners right now. And I think that that's a better allocation than just remaining so heavy in tech stocks or just the, the seven big names. You know, we're, we're so concentrated right now. I, I think that that's actually a, a, a consideration that we should look at because we're more concentrated than we were back even in the dot-com time frame and, and, and tech stocks. So, so that's an important one to be looking at. Um, but, uh, you know, oil is also beginning to take make some big moves here. And, of course, if we see higher inflation, then the price of oil is ultimately going to rise. I'm bullish on U.S. oil, though. Why? We do it cleaner and safer than anyone in the world. Not cheaper, but cleaner and safer. Those are important ideas, at least in the Western world. Uh, and, uh, and then last, I'd say that, you know, uh, we've got a lot of crypto uh, technologies right now that are starting to, uh, to, to you know to get figured out and uh, looking at that in, in, in concert with some with some gold but I will also note this silver Kristen I think is the most undervalued commodity mm -hmm. in the world right now and you're gonna see silver just rally through the end of the year it's gonna make way more than gold will uh, so you know there's a couple of ideas there that are alternatives that do have some growth I believe that the story's right even if economics uh, are not as strong interesting what about cryptocurrency, David? I ask you if people can now invest in that in their retirement portfolio. People can get access to it via Bitcoin ETFs. Or, of course, they can still buy crypto outright. How does your firm look at cryptocurrency and what's your recommendation to your clients? Awesome question. Okay, so the SEC has not really allowed us to have a, an opinion on this until recently. And so what we do as a firm and an organization is, you know, if we have clients that are interested in, in allocating here, then we'll allocate a percentage we know where to go. Um, as, as far as, you know, where crypto assets are, et cetera, the best idea I have is this, uh, or I heard this, you know, whatever you would spend to, to take a nice vacation over a weekend, maybe with a significant other, if you put that amount of money into crypto, uh, the worst possible scenario would be that you lose one weekend's worth of value. If things really work out, though, then perhaps that uh, that one weekend's allocation uh, that you wouldn't have necessarily missed over the long run becomes some very significant amount of money, just given the fact that, you know, yes, it's speculation where we are right now in the crypto space, but we're definitely seeing a lot of moves moving forward right now. I mean, places like Bitcoin, of course, they always lead, but we're looking at more areas like Ethereum, Cardano, uh, some of these smart contracts uh, that, that give us the ability to, you know, transact very quickly, be decentralized, uh, and make sure that things are, are ultimately, um, you know, securitized in a way that, that our money is our money. We're not getting ripped off. There's not a lot of fraudulent things. And so I think that this technology is ultimately going to really shape the world as things continue to unfold right now. So nice run up uh, coming here in crypto. Uh, obviously, moving into this uh, halving cycle here with Bitcoin, uh, just know, know this, that uh, I think Bitcoin's probably going to hit 100,000, maybe even 150 by year end. But the altcoins are actually way more exciting uh, because they're likely to uh, to do more than double or triple there. Uh, and uh, if, if Bitcoin does uh, that, that same trajectory. We'll be watching closely. David Strzeski, CEO of Sound Planning Group, joining us from Washington. Thanks for getting up early, David. Uh, very early there on the West Coast. All right. Stay